everybody. This is Clark from Mexicali Fish Keeper. Hey, today I got a, a video for you guys. I'm actually out here in uh, North Las Vegas. I came out here to see our daughter. And uh, while I was sitting at home, trying to figure out what we're going to do for today, I got on Google and uh, on Google Maps and looked up the a local, you know, a local tropical fish store. And it just so happened that right down the road, Right down the road, literally about three blocks away from where my daughter's staying at, uh, they have this store here, which is called uh, the Blue Free Aquatics. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go in here. I've already talked to the, the store owner. He kind of gave me a little bit of a rundown of the store. And uh, so I'll take you guys in there and check it out. They do uh, fresh water and salt water. So the store is kind of divided half and half. And uh, you guys will be able to get a, a sense of that when I walk in there. So come on in with me and uh, we'll check it out together. All right, so this is the front of the store. Uh, as soon as you come in, oh, let me get the door. Uh, as soon as you guys come in, you can see that you're received by the counter and it tells you clearly there that This side of the store is going to be fresh water. This side of the store is going to be salt water But just so that you guys can get a feel for it as you walk in here. It looks like they have all their Equipment tanks filter media all that stuff is on the on the right hand side of the store And on this side over here. We have a lot of more decorations uh, some of the nano tanks that you have for for uh, for fresh water or salt water and um, so let's take a walk and look and see what's going on um, obviously they have your 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 standard decorations uh, for anybody that's coming into the hobby you're gonna have some of the you know the the, the plants and stuff like that the plastic plants um, they're gonna have some of your typical decorations especially if you're doing like a kids aquarium uh, which is usually a lot of people that are coming into the hobby. This is the section where they'll probably be doing most of their shopping Just because it's a lot less intimidating uh, To do escape for or uh, d uh, Decorate an aquarium and it'll be very low maintenance because none of this stuff is stuff you need to take care of um, They got some equipment down here on the floor uh, So you guys can see that These are like their nano section for their equipment there uh, and then in here, obviously they have their their uh, uh, foods that need to be kept at uh, temperature controlled, and some of the frozen foods, both for salt water and fresh water. Uh, in here, as you come around the counter, you can see some more some more aquariums and things like that. And then over here, immediately, we get set up. We get to see one of their display tanks. It looks like it's one of these cubes. Um, it's got some quarries in here. Looks like uh, either some killifish or some uh, these fish that I haven't seen. I don't know if they're Daniels, Rasboras, or, or Killies. They look like blue eye Killies, but I'm not 100% sure. And uh, you can see that very nice display tank right there. Uh, let's go this way. Over here, they have a center island with some rainbow fish in here. This is, uh, as you guys can see from the top, it's one of these, I've, I'm really fascinated by these aquariums here. Uh, a lot of the times they set them up for display. A lot of the stores that I've been to is usually where they have their, their storage for all their, their uh, plants. But I've always liked this profile for some reason. It seems, um, I like the fact that you can walk around it and see all the different angles in it. Here they're kind of showing you some of the ideas that you can take. Uh, they have some really nice crypts in here. Um, one of the things that immediately stands out is um, how clean the glass is. Even for these display tanks, you can see that they've taken the time to do some of the, you know, just the routinely maintenance to clean up so that you can really appreciate what's in there. In here, they have a couple of displays with some, you know, stuff for like for some ponds and some other decoratives. And then we come around here, they continue with some of the nano aquariums. Um, they have some hardscape here. Uh, they I obviously sell it by the pound because they have a weight scale here to be able to measure it out. They have um, rocks for saltwater aquariums. Um, um, don't know if they have any live rocks, but then on this side, they have their their 
beta um, displays where they have uh, where they have all these little guys set up in here. Uh, it looks like they have some of the Mexican dwarf crayfish in here. Oh, let me go this way. In here, obviously, they have some stuff for your bettas. Anything you're going to set up your aquarium with. Uh, they're starting to get a little bit busy. They open up at 11 o'clock in the morning uh, till uh, I believe 7 o'clock. And um, it's just a little bit, probably about 10, 15 minutes after they open and they're starting to get some foot traffic, especially on the weekend. Uh, in here, obviously this is where the beginning of their freshwater section starts. And uh, we'll see if they have anything that's uh, out of the ordinary. Um, obviously most of these stores have to carry the basic stuff that most people, especially people getting into the hobby, come looking for. Uh, they got some small Oscars in there. They have different variations and sizes of um, goldfish. Uh, they have some snails, looks like some ghost shrimp in there. Uh, here we have some, uh, might be some neocaridinas, I'm not 100% sure. Um, they have some nerite snails, they have some assassin snails, they do look like some sher sherry shrimp in here. Uh, here's some more, like really, shrimp. And down in here they have some amano shrimps, at least that's what it says on there. I can't see any right now. But the lights are just coming on too, so it could be a while before they start coming out. And then, you know, down here, you can see they have some silver dollars. Some red hook silver dollars with a rainbow um, shark, uh, red tail. In here, there might be some more, some more snails. Uh, in here, they have some, uh, looks like rasboras. Yeah, it looked like emerald, emerald reservoirs in there. Some uh, coolie loaches in the back. Uh, in here, some more goldfish. Uh, some black neons, some coolies. The black coolie loaches. They have some of those, and then some white clouds. Those are always pretty neat. And uh, that one up there is empty. They have some koi's in here. Some small koi's, some medium sized koi's. In here they have a mascara barb, which is pretty cool. You don't normally see those. Uh, looks like a big old Chinese alligator in the back. What might be a, a geophagus. So this is kind of like a little combination of different fish in there. Then you can see they have some of their decorative substrates, the inert stuff in the bottom. Over here we have some rams with some interesting looking eels. Those are some peacock eels. I hadn't seen those before, not in person. I mean, I've seen them in videos and stuff like that, but I really had not had an opportunity in here. These are some, uh, the, the big old leaf fish. There's some uh, leopard. Ah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna butcher that. I'm not even gonna try it. Looks like uh, some brackish fish in here with the scats. Uh, electric blue Jack Dempsey's. And some sort of a catfish. I don't know if it's a, yeah, it's an iridescent shark. Shark. Those guys get pretty big. And then they have a few little bit of uh, African cichlids up here. But one of the things that does stand out is the cleanliness of the aquariums. Um, they seem like they really stay up on their maintenance. You don't see uh, hardly any algae in any of this. And then they have this little center pond. Um, they've got a marijuana in there. Uh, a couple of the common plecos in here with some uh, koi. Uh, this has got to be at least like uh, four foot, maybe four foot by eight. Almost the size of a sheet of plywood. Uh, the dimensions in it and maybe about 30 inches high so that's a, like a little indoor pond that they have in here in here you're gonna see uh, some more fish they have some pakus it looks like some pictus catfish uh, you can see a more more of the substrate done in here and then you start seeing some bigger fish in at the bottom display ones we'll take a look at those um, this is the section where I like to kind of hang out more because you got a little bit more of the nano species. You have um, 
What are those? I don't think I've ever seen those rainbow fish. Are they the thread fins? They might be some thread fins. Uh, up here, some garamis with some Siamese algae eaters. Uh, a black belt cichlid. Okay, this is not a very common in most most of the stores that I've been to. So they have some of those in there. They have some black neon tetras. Uh, there's supposed to be some whiptails in here, but they might be out at the current time. Uh, some glass uh, catfish. Those are pretty cool. Uh, in here, it looks like we have some more rainbow fish. With a chocolate cichlid. Oh, I don't see them. Unless, no, that's... Are these it? I don't know. I've never seen them that small, but could be. Uh, of course, we got to have some libraries, some platies up here. These neons are actually looking very good. Uh, one of the things that I always look for is how iridescent the colors are, because usually that's a good indication of, of their health. So they have some of those in there, some hatchet fish. Uh, and then down here, we have some um, panda quarries with some uh, gold tetras. Some gold tetras, a couple of plecos in there. Kissing garamis up here with a paradise fish that it looks like in the back. Uh, these are some uh, sword tails. The sorted sword tails in here. Uh, I'm just, you know, really liking how clean these, these aquariums are. Uh, in here we have some uh, German blue rams. Uh, some dwarf chain loaches in here and it looks like some uh, Bacharides, the fairy cichlids, they're African cichlids. Uh, down here, let's go back over here, looks like they have a red devil. This guy's sitting here by himself and he's got all the substrate moved around like they typically do. In here, there looks like a couple of African cichlids in here. And over here we have some convicts. No pet store would be complete without any convicts. Those were actually the very first fish that I ever kept when I got into the hobby. They have some mollies. In here they have some rainbow fish. These are interesting. These are uh, snake, snake skin barbs. Um, as you guys well know, uh, I don't have access to a lot of fish, so this is something that I typically don't see. Uh, they have some angel fish, some really good looking angel fish. One of the things that I always try to look for is their finish to make sure that it's complete and straight and that they're not missing. Um, that's going to be a pretty good indication of um, you know how these, these guys were raised and the water quality they were kept in. Because usually when the water quality is pretty bad, that's when you start having all sorts of issues with those finish. These guys right here, these golden barbs. I haven't had the opportunity to see these. This is the first time. Um, it's amazing the color that, that's coming off of them. Um, it's the first time I've ever seen those. So, And in here we have a little um, ghost knife fish coming over here this way. We've got a little tube for him to hide out in. And down here uh, looks like some um, blood parrots. We have a few Oscars, a little bit bigger. It looks like some of the long fin Oscars. Down in here, a couple of guys in here. Uh, I guess there's some more African cichlids. I don't know if you guys can be able to see that guy right in there. We have angel fish, a little bit bigger in size, and some, uh, uh, what are these, uh, the rainbow sharks, albino rainbow sharks. So you have some of that in there. They have some of the skunk loaches and some trophies. These guys are really neat when they're juveniles, but once they get bigger, if you can see the transformation of these guys, I wish they would stay like little miniature starry nights. That would be so cool. Uh, in here we have some uh, cherry barbs, pretty popular in the hobby. Uh, we have some Odessa, yeah, Odessa barbs in here. Some Adelphoi quarries. We have some gold severums. These guys are tiny, but they, they'll grow up to be about eight, ten inches. 
And in here we have some dwarf neons. We have some more African cichlids in here. Uh, let's see, red snooks and the yellow rainbow. I don't see the rainbow in there. Uh, these guys look like they're dealing with a little bit of something. Let's see, we have an eel in here, a tire track eel, uh, which I think these are American flag fish. So these are actually native species out of Florida. Uh, they're supposed to be pretty good algae eaters. We have some more um, uh, rainbow fish in here, some yo yo loaches, African cichlids. Red tail Rachel. catfish, knife fish in the back. Now these guys are interesting. These guys are what? They're the Indian glass fish. Yeah, I don't know. I don't that's the first time I get to see those. Some blue polar convicts. Some fire mouse. They're looking pretty good. Some abano cories, they got a little puffer down in there. That's a fajaca puffer, but that's it's a real small fajaca puffer in there. Uh, some more of the eels down in here. We had seen those. And let me go around this way. Let's look at the. These are probably their their shrimp tanks, or no? These are the plants. They have a different selection of plants with some looks like some female bettas in here. Some anubises. And <laughs> this is kind of cool. The way this is just done they've got it where it's cascading from one to the other to the other to the other and then that's the return in here and it cycles all the way back up I really like that that's kind of cool so they have a, a lot of movement a lot of flow in these for the plants um, some of these you can tell they're going through the transition of you know going from the immerse stage to the submerge so you can see some of the leaves where they're starting to go through that transition and uh, but, you know, again, what's also pretty impressive is they keep these real clean because you don't see any algae or any of that stuff in there. So, going down here, um, looks like some Bolivian rams with a, uh, what is that, a emperor loach? Okay, I hadn't seen that before. Uh, some tiger barbs. Some Severums. Those guys are looking really good. Uh, these guys look like some. Uh, they're not Colombian. Yeah, I guess these are the Colombian Tetras, the red and blue Colombian Tetras. Uh, some major fish, some shovel nose looks like in there, real small. They have some other peacocks in there. Upside down catfish. Or butterfly fish, I mean. There's a knife down there. Some little pea puffers, it looks like, in here. Yep. They've got, the more I look in here, the more I see of them in there, but there's one up close. Uh, rose line sharks, I don't, unless those are real tiny. No, I don't think those are it. Those, those are some other kind of quarry. And then we'll go around this other way right now because there's some people there and I don't want to I don't want to interfere with what they're doing. As you guys can see, people the traffic is starting to pick up, which is a good indication for most fish stars. Let's see. And here, they do carry some stuff for CO2. Um, you know, some very basic starter kits. Uh, they've had obviously the the fertilizers and all the nutrients you need for your plants. Um, in here, we have some of the substrates. All right, so I'm gonna cut that a little bit short because there's more people on that side. Let's take a walk over here to the saltwater side. Uh, they do have some fittings and stuff like that that are pretty common that you, when you're trying to set up some systems. So if you're looking for any of that stuff, you can find it here. Uh, in here, we start getting into the saltwater section and uh, it looks like they have quite a bit of selection of different corals in here I'm gonna be a little bit out of my element because I'm not too familiar with a lot of this stuff but look they have a pretty cool seahorse in there 
looks like a lot of uh, cleaner crews in here. You have some crabs in there. Uh, and then a lot of this stuff could be hiding. They have some gobies in there. Another one over here. So we have some shrimp in here, candy stripes. So a lot of these guys might be hiding within the substrate already. I don't know if you guys can see the antennas out of that one there, but um, they have some live rock down here with some corals. In here, that might be part of their filtration system for, for this setup here. You got some clownfish, a little bit more over here. Let's see, what's that yellow one down there? That's pretty good cool looking fish uh, he's hiding behind the plants we got some more clownfish in here this guy looks pretty neat that's a uh, I don't know what that is it's cool looking fish they have another one over here looks like a trigger fish back there by the by the farm these guys over here are pretty cool. We have some uh, gobies, some clowns. Some uh, cardinals. Those are cool. Let me see if I can get a good look on those guys. This is guy is pretty neat. I don't know what that is. Let's see. It's, I guess, no, it's not electric. It's a red chorus weasel, I guess. Uh, these guys are really neat, too. We got a rock angel, according to the to the, the thing up here. And then, but these guys right here are really neat. I like the shape and the coloration that they have on those. A lot of this stuff I'm not going to be able to identify because I'm not too familiar with a lot of the saltwater fish. <clears throat> these guys look pretty neat too. One of the things that I do notice is a lot of these guys look really, really healthy. Um, you know, they you don't see any clamp fins. They're a little bit shy, of course. Oh, look at this little puffer, a spiny puffer fish. That, <clears throat> that one's pretty cool. Some more clowns. Here's more of those. I guess there's some sort of a goby. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, I'm not too familiar with these fish. The only reason I think that is because of the shape of the face. That kind of makes me wonder if that's what it is. We have that in there. We have this little guy in here. He's retreating. I like his colors, like half of his body is black and white and the other star, the other part is red. It's a white tail grouper. Oh, it's a grouper. Huh, I wonder how big that gets. A banana weasel? No, a walrus. Oh, <laughs> weasel. And then that guy right here, the black angel, that one looks really neat. That's a beautiful looking fish. Oops, sorry about that. I do like these uh, these cardinals. This is just one one of my one of the fish that I would if I ever do a saltwater fish I would definitely like to keep these guys in there. So just continuing over here. I'm not even gonna try to identify a lot of these species because again I'm not too familiar with them. I think that's a fox face. And that one down there, what is that? Some sort of a puffer fish? What's the coloration on this guy? <laughs> this guy, very nice looking fish. Some gobies. Uh, 
another butterfly fish with a puffer back there. Look at these guys, they're yellow with purple. They're kind of like a yellow orange with some purple eyes and a purple streak down their face. Really nice colors. Uh, looks like another puffer right here, white spotted puffer. Look at that fish back there. I hope he would come out. Look at the color of that guy. He knows he's on camera, so he's trying to hide away from me, but he's yellow and black. There he goes. I'll see if I can get away and and hopefully he'll come out a little bit more. There's another puffer fish. There's a lot of variations of puffer fish, apparently in salt water. A lot more different species. Oh, these guys are, are these the ones that I'm thinking about that the, their eyes, I think, seem like they glow when it goes dark? <laughs> but those look pretty good. I like the, the black and white banded. These are damsels, according to the information on the glass. Oh, they got a lionfish. And an eel that's sticking its face out down there. Some chromis. Some macro algae. These guys are my... These, see, this is what I really like about saltwater. Is these big old shrimps. And the coloration that they have on them. Really, really cool. Here's another one down in here. Here's some more. So, I mean, these are empty, it looks like, right now. Coming around, they got some snails in here. Turbo snails. We got some more clowns and a little bit of frags in there with some corals. Look at that guy He's playing around the anemone. Here's another one making his nest in there. Really cool. Oh, they got some sea urchins, urchins, some stars, starfish in there. Here's some more of the shrimp, peppermint shrimps. And I guess this is your bid for, for live rock. If you're looking to start up uh, a live rock aquarium, it's seven bucks a pound. So they have some of that already ready to go. So look at this aquarium right here. This one is your display. Very simple, but yet very, very interesting. You can see the, the behavior, that interaction that the clownfish have with the anemone. Look at that. I really like that, that's kind of cool. And then obviously they have a bigger display tank in here. Um, and then in here, I'm not even gonna try. There's so many different types of corals and fish in here that I just don't know. But it looks real, real nice. Kind of like that, uh, that coral that's growing in the back. Kind of looks like a, a grass wall. Really neat. Really, it seems like it's really liking the flow in there. Oh, look at that guy right there. That's a really neat looking fish. Right here, he's coming up to the camera. There you go. Hey, buddy. This has got to be, I don't know, like a 280, 300 gallon aquarium right here. Let's get a look from the side. That's it right there. Um, let's go back around this way. Again, they have some more of the invertebrates in here. Have some really cool. I gotta admit, some of these uh, shrimp that you see in the salt water are really, really neat, and uh, their behavior also is—they're very interactive. They're not timid at all, and um, you know. They're doing their job. Look at this guy all puffed up. Almost seems like he's trying to pick a fight. Really neat. Really, really neat looking fish. Uh, in here they have some frags. 
obviously here's what they have in there some of the names of the corals that they have in there i don't have a filter for this and i don't see okay i see they have a they have a lens I'll probably be able to show you through some of that but that's what i'm see we can take a look through the lens not for children so No, it's not going to come through. This is the other side. A lot of this stuff, I am totally out of my league. I don't know that much about them, but I know there's plenty of you guys that keep both fresh and salt water and could probably appreciate seeing some of the stuff that they carry in here. This one's not as full as this one over here. This, this one down here, as you guys can see, is a pretty big uh, frag tank. And these, these seem to be a little bit bigger too. You can see some of the different corals that are in here. I guess some of these are like mushrooms and that's just some of the terminology. I'm not even going to try to identify what they are. So that's pretty, I have some on the other side. Here's another display tank. This looks like a 90 gallon. Might be like a 90 gallon. Really neat. They have some really nice looking fish in here. With some really interesting, uh, I kind of like the way that kind of waves in the in the water. Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know too much about this stuff, but I do know they look cool. <laughs> Not that that helps. That's that other one, big one in the back. And we'll come around this way. So, you know, they have a little bit of everything. Um, you know they have some rare stuff that you normally don't see at most other stores and uh, so I'm not gonna bother any of the customers since I'm only here filming but we'll do we'll finish up the loop by coming out here to their section where they have their aquariums uh, so if you're looking to set up an aquarium you can find everything you're gonna need from lights to you know all the gear that you're going to need that is required to set up your aquariums i'm pretty sure that they also have be willing to uh, give you the information needed I like the footprint of this one is 180 gallon this is pretty cool you have in there so this is uh like i said they're located in, in north las vegas it's blue reef aquatics and uh, they just happen to be very close to to where my daughter is living now and um, you know don't let the name fool you I know most of us that do freshwater think blue reef and we're thinking we're assuming that it's automatically they have some backgrounds for your aquariums um, you know the cleans the siphon hoses and all that stuff uh, you know don't think just because they have blue reef in the in the name that they don't do anything for the freshwater side so let me see if I can, the freshwater section seems to be a lot busier, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick look around. We were almost done with it anyways. The rest of the stuff that was over there looked like uh, some African, um, African cichlids and possibly some, um, not possibly, but some of the, the glowfish. And this is just the rest of their, there are bettas in here. What's really nice, even though the vessel looks kind of small, they are in a constant water uh, system. Uh, assuming they're running off a of sump. But um, but that's it pretty much, you know. It's a really nice store. They have a little bit of everything. And um, if you happen to find yourself in the area, you know, feel free to drop by. Uh, and if you live here in the North Vegas uh, area, then you definitely need to come by here if you're in the hobby and check out some of the stuff and like I said they do offer service in Spanish and English they have staff that does speak Spanish so if, uh, if you feel a little bit more comfortable speaking in Spanish then they'll be able to help you out here too uh, I'll also be doing this video in Spanish and uh, so you know if you want to you want to watch that too you're more than welcome to but I think this is going to be it for right now just want to take an opportunity since I was in the area to make sure to come in and check out a store. Um, 
I know I've, this is probably like the second or third store that I tour here in Las Vegas. At first I was thinking they didn't have a lot of stores because I hadn't found too much, but now that I've been here a few times, I've been able to find a few of them. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. You guys take care.